in this video we take a look at how to create a citation design like this in photoshop and this is coming up hey everybody it's innocent and welcome to the channel if you're new here please hit on the subscribe button if you're old here thank you so much for showing up so i'll link to download the resources that i'll be using in this video will be in the description download it and practice and send it to me on ig let's get interacted now let's get into photoshop and let's get started all right so here in photoshop we're going to use a3 size so i'm using photoshop cs6 but then this should work for even the latest version of photoshop now let's go to file and then go to new to create a new document you go to the preset and then you're going to set this one to international paper and then we're going to use the size a3 because citations are to be bigger and then we want to but you can use a4 or a5 either way so i'm going to select a3 and then i'll go ahead and click ok so the first thing we do is we go into the resource and then i have this vector background that i got from google so you drag and drop it inside of photoshop and that is going to serve as the background so what you do is you scale it up to fill the entire document that you've created you go ahead and you right click on this one and then you can rasterize it now you go ahead we want to change the color of this one since the design that we're going to create the logo that was provided the colors are white red and blue so you're going to try to use the exact same colors so you press on ctrl plus u and then it is going to activate the hue and saturation now you go to the hue section of it and then when you drag it to the right or left side it is going to change the colors for you so we want something like blue or something like that so we can drag it to the very extreme left and we can go ahead and click ok so this is the color that we want the next thing you do is you go to the shapes over here and then we're going to select the rectangle too now what you're going to do is you're going to create a rectangle so a rectangle around here something like that and then you press ctrl a and then you make sure that you center it both horizontally and then vertically now what we do next is we go ahead and double click on the layer thumbnail over here and then we're going to change the color to white and you click ok now at this point you can resize it to be a little bit smaller because we want it to be like it is in the middle of the whole document so you press ctrl t and then you can transform it a little bit smaller now we want to create the shape around the edges so what you do is you're going to rasterize this rectangle so you rasterize the layer such that you can apply anything like the rectangular market to or the rectangle market tool on it now from there you select the elliptical market tool or the circular market tool if you want to call it that way now with that selected what you do is you're going to create a circle around here or let's say you use the rectangular market tool to create that shape over there and then you're going to hit on the delete button so it is going to create this sort of shape or cut out for you now we want to make sure that the shape here plus everything on the other side we want to make sure that this side and that side they are all the same so what we're going to do is we're going to employ the strategy of making duplicates and then flipping it to the other side so what we do is you press ctrl j to make a duplicate and then you press ctrl t to transform it so at this point you right click on it and then you flip this one horizontally now go to view new guide and then you're going to set a guide of 50 percent to be in the middle okay so 50 percent and then it will be in the middle so with this particular rectangle selected let's go ahead and cut this portion so you're going to cut this portion delete it so that the other part the left side will show now if you do that it means that you have to go to the the second layer this particular layer and you delete that part so that this part also will show so with this second layer selected we're going to make the selection over here and then we can delete that as well and then you realize that this part also shows all right so at this point we realize that we have like two separate rectangles but what do we do next it means that we need to group all of these ones to make it one so you hold ctrl and then you're going to select the second rectangle and then you press ctrl plus e it will merge the two rectangles so that you have one now at this point it means that we need a second part we need it to reflect on the vertical 
as is so what we're going to do is we're going to make another duplicate again so you press ctrl j you make that duplicate and then you press ctrl t right click and then this time you don't flip it horizontal you flip it vertical now once you flip it vertical it means that you need to do the cuttings again so with this particular one selected this particular rectangle selected go for your rectangular marker to make a selection to at most like the middle part of it or anywhere close to the middle part and then you're going to cut that off and then that is going to reveal the uppermost selection now once you're done you come back to the second rectangle or the rectangle beneath it and then you select your rectangular marker tool and you make the selection from the bottom to this part and then you can delete that one as well and that is going to reveal the down part of the rectangle all right so at this point what we do is we do merge it again so you select the two rectangles by holding control and then selecting and then you press ctrl e to merge them so now it is just one rectangle and this is pretty much the most difficult part of this whole situation or this whole design the rest of the things are just tests and then some shapes all right so let's go ahead and start with the test so i already have my test grouped over here so i'll go and just select the first one over here i'll go for my test tool t for the test tool and the first font that i'll be using is called poppins so poppins over here and then i'm going to paste this one so i'll press ctrl a to select all of them i'll make sure that it is centered and then i'll press ctrl t to transform it out so transform it to be a little bit smaller like that and then you press ctrl a and you make sure that it is centered right over there you push it to the upper part of this one and i'm going to select the chaplaincy part of it and i'm going to change the color to red so i'll click ok when i'm done all right so right from here i can add my logos to it so that it can all be on the same side so i'll go to my resource and i have a, the logo for the university i'll drag it inside of photoshop and i'm going to place it at the left side of the design so i'll place it over here now to make sure that the logos are in the same line i'm going to apply a grid line over here or a ruler so i'm going to place it over here on top of the logo and then i'll place one beneath it and that means that when i go to the resource and i have the second logo over here i can easily drag and drop it inside of photoshop and i can place that one too at the upper right side of the design so i'll place it right over here and that looks fine for me so from here i can group all of these ones group it and i can call this one the heading all right so to move on to the next one let's set some more guidelines so let's go to view and then new guide here and we're going to set 10 percent for the left side and we go again and we set 90 percent for the right side this is to guide us to know exactly where to place our test so that it doesn't go out of frame and the work will look aligned now once that is done we're going to use another font called old english test so i'm going to select my test over here and then the font name is old english test i'll leave links to download them in the description so we want to create citation in honor of so the first thing that i type is c over here and the c i'm going to make it very big like this because i want to create some style with this one so the c is going to be big although i'm writing citation but then the c is going to be very big like this one and then i'll make a duplicate by pressing ctrl j and then i'll drag it to the right side so i'm going to edit this to the rest of the letters in citation so i press ctrl t and transform it a little bit like that and then i'll make sure that i position it over here so it reads citation all right now i'll make a duplicate and drag it to the very bottom of it i'm going to select it all and i'm going to type over here in honor of so now i'm going to select all of that again and change the font back to poppins but this time i'm going to use the regular one okay and then i'm going to try to decrease the font size a little bit like that and position it over here i'll press ctrl t and i'm going to drag it to make it align with a citation over there and i can push it over here and i'm going to select all of it change the color to blue remember i said we are using white blue and red 
and i'll click ok and then ok from here now the next thing that i want to do is i'll go for my rectangle tool over here and i'm going to create a rectangle underneath of this one so it has to be around this area i double click on the layer thumbnail and i'm going to select the blue color again and i'll click ok so i'll make sure that it is quite under this one so something like this and that is where we're going to put the name of the person all right so we can come back to the in and of and make a duplicate by pressing ctrl j and then we can drag it on top of this one double click on it and we're going to change the color to white okay so you click ok now you make sure that this is on top of the rectangle else you're not going to see it so you drag it over here and then i'm going to edit that to your name here so the name of the person is going to be here so your name here and then i'll click ok now i'll make sure that i position this to the very middle of it so that some of the names are going to be very long some are going to be very short so you make sure that the font type or the size that you're using will fit any name that is brought to you okay so at this point the next thing you do is you make another duplicate by pressing ctrl j and then you drag it to the very bottom of it select it all and then change the color back to red we are using a lot of red and blue today and then you're going to type your portfolio here all right your portfolio here that is going to be the portfolio the person was holding whether the person was the president the pastor or if the person served in any committee at all you can use this particular your portfolio here section to create that one as well so at this point i'm just going to select all of these and i'm going to press ctrl t and then i hold shift and drag it to make it aligned to the grid line that we created you can even decide to make it cross the grid line in the middle a little bit because we're just going to place a picture on the left side so at this point what we're going to do next is we're going to create the picture column where we'll be inserting their pictures on the left side so we go for the rectangle tool again and then here too we need a grid line to assist us so i'll drag a grid line over here and i'll drag another one to at this bottom so that i'll know that i'm creating my rectangle at this very point so over here now double click on the layer thumbnail here and change the color back to blue and click ok you press ctrl j to make a duplicate press ctrl t to transform it out a little bit like that and then you double click go back to the layer thumbnail of the copied rectangle and then you're going to change the color back to white that is the rectangle we're going to place our images in so let me quickly show you how to place the images in go to your resource you have your images over there let me first use the lady here that is the secretary and then i'm going to bring her over here i'll double click on the image right click and then i'm going to create a clipping mask what a clipping mask does is it, it's going to place the image right inside the shape underneath of it or the layer underneath of it so you realize that you can have her image right inside of it without any hassle or bustle without cutting it out or anything so what you do is in her case you're going to type a name over here and then the portfolio is going to be over here if you want to quickly change it you just go in and bring the second image let's say the main chaplain for instance you bring him over here double click on it right click and create a clipping mask like that and then you can press ctrl t and transform him out like this and then you can do the same thing for the third image so if you are doing this for many images you can just bring all of them in one after the other and then you create your clipping mask you right click create your clipping mask and then there you go it is that very simple so at this point i can group all of these ones starting from the last image that i added straight to the c over here i press ctrl g to group them and then i'm going to call this one the main so i'll press ctrl a and make sure that i center this it has to be in the middle so that it looks very good and then i can zoom out for you to see where we've gotten to so far and i can press ctrl t to transform all of this one out i want to make sure that it touches the very edge of the grid line that we set so something like this ctrl a to make sure that it is centered and then i can drag this down over here 
like that when i press ctrl h to turn off the grid lines this is exactly what we have so far now the last thing that we're going to add is any test that you want to add and in designing citations you don't use the normal testing method i'm going to show you a very quick method right over here so instead of going for your test tool and just left clicking to create the test you use what we call the test box and this is the test box when you pick the test tool you left click and then you create a box like this and this is going to be very helpful because this opens up the paragraph section of the test so that you can create paragraphs so i've already typed my test so i'll go to my test over here and i'm going to select all of this one and i'll copy that i'll come to photoshop and i'm going to paste this now this is what i mean when you select all of these and you go to the toggle character over here it opens up the paragraph section for you when you use the actual test and then you left click on it it is not going to give you this section at this section you are able to justify the test so you can justify to the left and then you see that everything is intact and then you can justify to the middle as well let me go ahead and decrease my font size a little bit i want all of them to show up so i think um let's say 20 let me go for 25 okay and i'm going to close up the leading over here so let me set this to 32 i want everything to show up so 33 and i'm going to open this one up so you can open this one up even to the very bottom part so that a god bless you at the very bottom will show now sometimes what you realize is that when you use this test box at the end of the day it cuts a part of the test but then you have to make sure once you select the test and then you see the edges you can open up the edges for instance the upper part here i can open it up to the very top and then everything will be in place so once you're done with everything you can place your test or push your test down a little bit and then you can make the necessary adjustments now the final thing that we want to do is we want to create a watermark using the logo so i'll go back to the logo where i have my logo over here and then i'm going to make a duplicate i'll drag it to the very bottom part of it and then i'll close my group over here so this is going to be the logo we're going to use for the watermark so i'll press ctrl a to make sure that it is centered both horizontally and vertically and i'll press ctrl t and i'll transform it to be a little bit bigger like this now i'll go back to my opacity over here and then i can start taking or dropping the opacity to the very left side so i want to set it around 10 percent over here so that it is transparent or create a watermark in the background so after this i'm going to select all of these and i'm going to group that also to called or to be called the background right over there and yes when i press ctrl h to turn off all my grid lines this is the citation that we have i hope this video was helpful if it was kindly hit on the subscribe button and share this video so others can learn for free thank you so much for sticking around to watch this video i'll see you guys in the next video it's innocent here and bye.